little crooked there. We can fix that. I'm not so crooked. I don't want you to think I'm a crooked guy. All right, there we go. All right, so let's get you up on. This on my monitor here. Bam! Bait painting on a snowy day. There we go. I can see this. Kind of, I'm hanging up my uh, thingy up there. So, all right. So, we get the bait paints. Paint baits, not bait paints. Whatever. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Let's do some spooks. Yeah, topwater fishing is my favorite form of fishing. And I've got these. I'm going to do a couple spooks. Lovely spooks. And so we're just going to wipe them down really good. Try to remove anything that's on them that would keep my paint. I'm sticking to it, so we're just wiping them down with some water. Doing that, so. This is what it looks. This is your before picture. <laughs> and we're gonna work on the after picture. <laughs> Am I, okay, you can hear me. That's good. Never know. Sometimes I hit the M button. I think I disabled it, which is mute. Um, shortcut on OBS. I use OBS. It's free software and it's really, really good. You can do so much with it, although I don't do half of what. I don't even do a fraction of what you can do with OBS. So, Anybody have any ideas for some spooks? Now, typically with spooks, we want to go with a brighter color. Uh, a bone, uh, platinum, white, silver. Nobody's on. So, you're going to leave it up to me. Uh, let's see what we can do. I'm looking on my paints. I really love my turbo dorks. Afterburner looks really, really good. Um, so is ground is lava. Ground on ground is lava. This one right here looks so copperish on a white base. On a black base, it goes from copper to magenta. It transitions. Love this paint. I always say I have to buy more, but it's so expensive. Um, <laughs> bone is always good. We're going to go with a white base. Love pearl, pearl white. But either one, I need to go with white base. So off we go. So, get some water for our paintbrush. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. Shake our paint, shake our paint. Oh, shake, 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 shake. Timmy! <laughs> How are you, buddy? Timmy's on! So, what do you think? And squirrel! <laughs> evening, evening. So, it's a nice big snowy day outside. It's snowing now, a lot of, a lot of snow on the ground. What do you guys think? I'm going to paint two spooks. You guys come up with the paint pattern. What do you think? Should we go dark or light? 
That's really the big question right now. I'm thinking light because I usually like light, lighter, brighter baits up on the top water. There's a top water bait that splashes, walks across the water. Um, that's why we're going to go with white. <laughs> no, <laughs> Timmy, <laughs> no. <laughs> No, 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 there's no ice on the lake. I got all this snow out there, but it's too windy. Every time ice is formed, the wind breaks it up. Oh, it sucks. Oh, it really stinks. We may not even have, I think we, we're postponing, if not canceling, the ice fishing event. Um, which is very frustrating for me, because I work so hard on that event. And uh, I just, I don't, I, I don't know. Our lake has a tendency of, uh, of changing its mind awfully quick. Inside two weeks, we could have solid walkable ice. We have no ice right now. I mean, there's some floats out there, but nothing. So, very frustrated. I got all my ice fishing gear ready to go. <laughs> got all my ice fishing gear ready to go. And I got nowhere to go. Nowhere to go. I need a frozen lake. Give me one month. Now give me two months. <laughs> but I'm happy for a week right now. Uh, so we're going to do two baits. These are spooks. Walking baits, pencil baits, whatever you want to call them. Nonetheless, they are top water baits. Whatever you want to call them, your nickname, whatever you want. And I just... Uh, Alright. No big deal, right? So we're just putting white, we're just putting a white base on it. That's all we're doing right now. A couple coats of it, give a nice white base. Now, what I'm thinking, it's like when I start painting, I start thinking. <laughs> okay. Sort of like working a canvas, you know, you just uh, think, okay, what? As I lay down one layer, I'm thinking, okay, what can I do with the next layer? <laughs> oh, you're dark. I know, I am too, Tim. I totally am. <gasps> you know, Walton Lake, which is east, northeast of Bend, it's doing really, really well. It's frozen. People are out on that lake. That's a long drive. I mean, that's three and a half hours to go ice fishing. I'm seeing people post on that. Um, our normal lakes, which is Diamond, um, Lake of the Woods, Fish Lake, Gerber, all the really close ones, nothing. I think Diamond's got some thin layer, but it's probably broken up because of the wind. You have to check the um, lake cam. We are painting what we call a spook. It's a walking bait. This is a top water bait that you walk on top of the water. Um, one of my favorite ways of fishing is top water. Uh, uh, this type of bait requires a little bit of technique. It's a little bit of a flip with your wrist. It causes the bait to jet back and forth and splash up on top while rattling. And that commotion just allows, you know, a bass to just surface and explode on it. Um, hey, Rick. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, don't forget thumbs up, guys. Um... And so this particular type of bait is a technique bait. 
not a not a beginner's bait. So more than likely, anybody who buys this is already familiar with, you know, they've been fishing for a little while. But it's a bait that the Lake of the Woods does not sell unless I make them. And they should sell because it's a great bass lake. And uh, so we got two coats of white on there. That's our base. So then we're going to I'm thinking here. See, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. It's my thinking look. It's my thinking look. I have to put more water in this. Yeah, we're going to. All right. I'm, I'm, I think on this bait, I'm going to transition. So, we'll have to put another base on here. Now, it'd be fun. We could try something new. See, the base of a paint has everything to do with the color it ends up like. It's fun to play with bases of paint. Um, Let's put some water in this. Because if I put a blue base instead of a black base, it changes the color. And if you put a green base instead of whatever, you know what I mean. Yellow base, whatever. And I'm thinking. Shall we play a game? <laughs> I think we might. I'm going to go with an opaque green once I get these dried up pretty good as a secondary base on part of the spade. Just bought a lightweight St. Croix rod. Nice. Super sensitive. Awesome. St. Croix is a great rod. In fact, I think it was Dix over in Medford that was clearing them all out. And um, you can get a really good deal on St. Croix over at Med in the Medford Dix. Um, so... They didn't have the exact rod I wanted, so I, I think I, did I want, yeah, I wanted an ultralight, and they didn't have any. I do have another um, Cajun coming this week, seven and a half foot light. Um, I'll be using that new reel on it. It should be able to whip out, you know, some really light lures. For me. So we're going to, we got to dry these babies up pretty good because I'm going to mask them off with magic blue tape and I'm going to create sort of a diagonal on it um, by putting a green back on it with the white forward and bottom. We're going to create something like this but with a different base. So, this one I did a few weeks ago. So, and uh, this one has a, an illuminating belly. I actually added lit um, to it, to the clear cup. So it lights up. It looked really good when I put it in the water. <coughs> We'll see. These are spring baits. So we just gotta keep we gotta just keep that thing drying. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, 
<laughs> okay, so I'll show you something. This, uh, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you buy something on Timu. <laughs> like, so this is this is my latest Timu. It's made out of uh, aluminum, tin, or whatever. And this shows you freshwater game fish. It shows you world record and the date and where it, it was caught. So that's kind of cool, huh? So it's kind of nice because, you know, it's sort of nostalgic and it's still informative, you know? I like it. <laughs> oh, well, thank you, Tim. The, uh, yeah, I might do a couple more boxes. You know, I've I gotta buy some big baits. Um, I haven't done that with your build yet. Uh, getting ready, because all these are four inches or smaller. Um, in that box, you have a really big bait, a very expensive one. Um, I am located in Klamath Falls, Oregon. Um, beef for Baron? <laughs> you got one of those too. Yeah, it's kind of a neat little tin thingy. Uh, <laughs> you never know what you get on Timu. And don't buy a reel on Timu. And that's still dry. This was ten dollars. <laughs> okay. You guys saw me unbox this thing. This is the world's worst reel. It's pretty looking, I guess. Comes with no instructions. It's a Sugiyong. Has no drag, okay? It's either on or off. Um, there is no drag to this thing. It's either on or off. Um, it is a terrible... It took me 20 minutes to figure out how to remove the side cap. And it has no lock. So I'm looking for a lock, a screw, something, but you just twist it. Um, it's got a lot of magnets in it, so it might be a good learning reel just for casting. Don't use it on the water. Um, <laughs> it's terrible. Even sounds, even sounds terrible. I just did it because it was ten bucks. <laughs> Never did it before. It was, it's pretty bad. <laughs> oh, instead of back, well, it's so hard to do boxes. Hey, let me show you. Let me show you. Uh, all right, so I got these, and I got. So, we got these, but, um, and this is expensive and hard to do, all right? <laughs> okay. Um, the trick was, so you basically, I can take a jerk bait, this one's not finished, it's not clear coated or fitted, but I can take this and just say, pop it in there like that and hang it up. That's very, very pretty, isn't it? That's a very pretty presentation. Then I got these things called pillow boxes. Uh, pillow boxes. But what I did do this year at the resort is you'll see these for the finesse. They're blister packs. And basically just insert a business card in the back. So much easier to do. And you got a business card that comes with every one of them. So, kind of a nifty little presentation. Bags are cheaper. <laughs> it's just so much cheaper. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Sometimes those bags are a pain in the butt. You know, they're five mil bags, they're thick, but the hook, I use really good hooks so they can still pop out. It's a pain in the butt to remove them. But, um, this is. The, uh, you know, this, this is what you'll see in the resort. And as of this moment, <laughs> I know those bags. And that'll be <laughs> locally made. <laughs> I know. 
<laughs> but this actually is really real pretty. Um, you print it, you fold it, insert it, even have a barcode on it. This really is the best way to present my baits in the store. So yes, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they do. My mine was bent, but I unbented it <laughs> and I put it up here. <laughs> ah, Muskegon, Michigan. My family's from Michigan. Both my parents, both my um, sisters, were born in Detroit. Uh, lots of Great Lake ice stories. A uh, big gap between my sisters and my little brother and me, and they moved out to California in that period of time. My mom's family runs the uh, Mafia in Detroit, uh, Zerlis, and, uh, you know, Joseph Zerlis real famous, Tony Zerlis real famous, you know, mob guys. Those are all uncles, cousins, great uncles. Yeah, back in the day, huh? Um, when the Mafia was the Mafia. Now it's just a money laundering business. <laughs> the glory of mobs. <laughs> but yeah, if you know the Zerlis, you know my family. That's my mama's side. She was, she was, she's passed, uh, a Zerli. And, uh, the Rafinos, uh, not too much into the mob action. So what we're going to do now, we're going to uh, we're going to have a little fun with these baits. We, it might turn out nice. It might be just two baits that I give away um, to somebody and one for me, one for somebody else. So basically I just take a piece of blue tape when I tear it in half. And now I'm just going to mask it. right down here and we're just going to bring it right up so we we get sort of that back um, on it and we're just going to put this here a little bit of hair there and we're just going to do the back just like that and that's our green area um, that's going to be our green area that's only a base oh my phone's ringing I don't know where it is There it is. Suspected spammer. We got shut up and fish on my phone too. I love that little song. It's a fun little ditty. ditty. Maddie and Tay, two sisters. All right, so I'm gonna put this on here. I'll tell you, it's all a snow day here today, so. Um, School's out, the kids are sleeping in still. <laughs> no school today. And we're going to sort of do that. All right, so we've got our masks on here. So now we're going to mix our green. It's just an opaque green. That's all this is. So, kind of interesting what's going to happen when I put the color on top of that. Um, it's going to be really interesting. And uh, it's going to change it. Change the color. 
something I've never done. I've never done it over a green base, so we, I don't know what's going to happen to it. <laughs> no idea. I just know it's going to be different. It will color shift. I'm going to take all that uh, dry paint off because I really don't want that in my brush. And stir briskly. Yeah, it's just 3M blue. <laughs> That's all it is. Thanks, Timmy. <laughs> it's just those boxes, doing the insert is the tough part. I really wanted it to look really nice, but it was a lot of work. Um, so it looked good. It just was too much work. And people always throw away the boxes and packaging anyway. So I'm like, why should I do a lot on something people are going to throw away? And it just didn't seem... I'd rather put more time and effort in the base than in the packaging. You know what I mean? And with the new packaging, with those blister packs with the business card, people might keep the business card. They're not going to keep that folded piece of paper. Um, and... Uh, I'm going to dry those. Probably put another coat on there. I don't know. We'll see what it looks like. So, and I, it, it just didn't seem like it was a wise use of my time. You know, the, uh, the packaging. Um, people are going to buy my bait not because it's the uh, the prettiest packaging on the wall. That's not why they're going to buy the bait. They're going to buy the bait because it's hand painted locally for our local lakes. Uh, that's why we sell it at the Lake of the Woods because it's a lake I work, fish at all the time. <coughs> and every time I paint a bait, I kind of have that lake in mind. Now mind you, these baits will work in any lake, but it's really... <laughs> Yeah, it's just one of those things, you know, you know, just... You just want a custom bait for your lake. You don't get that anywhere else. <laughs> you just don't get it. Don't even get it. When you're here at Lake of the Woods. So I put a video up today on uh, my rebuilding. It's kind of cool, uh, you know, what I, the gear I chose and uh, why I didn't go with the old gear that I did have. And uh, there is a free gift. On today's broadcast, you go to the uh, instructions. There is my latest fun time reading. It disconnected, reconnected. Okay, all right. You guys lost me. Um, so I want you guys to check out that video. And <laughs> read that short story that I wrote. Um, it'll probably take you a whole 15 minutes. Something to do on a snowy day. <laughs> if it's snowing where you are. <laughs> if it's not snowing where you are, then it's Something to read on a stormy day or a sunny day. Clean that out a little bit. We're going to put bone in here next. Really don't want that green tint in there. Come on, 
right, right, right. No. Swapping around a little bit. Yeah, it is just there's just three on the blue tape. That's all. I mean, nice thing about painters tape, it doesn't leave a residual on the bait itself. Peels on, applies, pulls off. Real simple. Um, blue tape is a necessary thing for anybody who does painting, especially lures, because you know. You really don't want that residual. You don't want to use masking tape. This is going to be interesting. So we're going to put this on and then... We're going to put ground as lava on it. I really love this color. Really good color. Some about copper. You know, oranges do really, really well in fishing. Yes, all my paints are water-based. They're acrylics. So they're not toxic. My cleaner is not toxic. Uh, the only thing that's toxic is the epoxy, and I don't spray that. I paint that on with a with paintbrush. Lots and lots and lots and lots of disposable paintbrushes. You know, I actually hand paint. And when I put the epoxy on, it allows me hand painting to concentrate around the hooks, you know, the eyes, and, and really build those up, as well as the front of the bait. So any anywhere where it's going to take the worst abuse, I could go ahead and do that. Also, like the bait I showed you earlier, I can add a pigment into it. All my baits usually have a pigment in it that shifts color. Um, it's a sparkle in the clear coat, but there's another one over there called Lit, and it's activated with UV light. So if you, on some of my baits, you can activate it with UV light for a few minutes, and the thing shines and it illuminates in the water. Really, really cool. Yeah, frog tape works really good. Yeah. Yeah, any, any blue tape is going to work real well. Uh, this one technically isn't three. Yeah, well, scotch. This is scotch blue. So. Any blue tape is going to work really, really well. Um, yeah, this whole roll lasts me a year or two. <laughs> no reason to go cheap on blue tape. No reason. No, and, and, and using a reducer for your paint uh, instead of water uh, will help it adhere to your bait better. Um, and this one bottle will last me years. So, again, there's no reason to to go with water uh, and use the reducers, especially when you're dealing with, um, you know, pigment that has metallics in it, aluminum metallics. Um, you really want it, you know, this one doesn't require reducing. This one, two to, you know, one to one. So, you want to use something that is a reducer at that point. Alright, so let's uh, remove this blue tape. And we're just removing the blue tape. So, and it looks kind of funny right now, but again, you're not even going to see that color. You're not even going to see the color. This is simply a base. That's all it is. So we remove that. Now we're going to add the bone to the white portion of this. And Lure Build makes designs a very good, um, ready to flow. James Gano, who owns Lure Bill, he does a real good job on a lot of his design, his formulations. Ah. Ah, we know it's it back. Way too much. Now we're just going to 
put a few coats of this on the bottom. This is our bone. Bone is a sort of a cream and it works really, really well in attracting fish. Uh, now the nice thing about this particular vein, when you paint a vein, you got to sort of think too about how is it going to fly through the water, or in this case on top of the water. And typically the bottom is what the fish are going to see. Now because it's cylindrical, um, it is going to rotate as it walks left and right. And so you're going to have this flash um, on this bait. And uh, that's the, the flash is what you're really controlling about the back. Um, that's what you're really controlling. What is What flash are we do, have we designed this bait to do in the water? So basically you want a contrast. So as it flips and it, you walk it, you want it to you want that white, the, this bone to disappear and reappear, disappear and reappear. And that is going to catch the fish's attention. Yes, I've done seven and a half inch. Um, yeah, yeah, I've done some really big ones and I, we will I will get some more from James. Um, on those and we'll be doing more of those. My seven and a half inch uh, wake baits uh, work really, really well. Um, you will catch big fish. Bigger the bait, bigger the fish, typically, when it comes to bass. Uh, so that's our bone on there. So we put the bone on the belly. Way too much in this cup. That's okay. This is non-reduced, so you can just pour it right back in that bottle. Um, yeah, we will we will definitely be doing some big baits, um, and those are, you know, they're expensive. They're 40, 50 bucks. They're out in the garage, <laughs> or else I showed you. <laughs> I have my big bait. I don't know why it's out in the garage. A lot of things out in the garage. <laughs> but those jointed baits are awesome. If not a cheap bait, blank to buy. But I love the bigger surfaces to, you know, it's like a larger canvas um, to paint on. Small baits are so much harder to paint and fit. But yeah, maybe I'll go online and see what James has on some big baits. Okay, so this is around his lava. This will be interesting over that green back. But in the front, it's going to be copper looking. It'll look really cool. With these metallics, you just got to shake them up really, really, really good. Um, you can't, if you want them to color shift. And again, this is a one-to-one. -one. This, this stuff comes out like toothpaste. You're going to thin this out. And you're going to put at least three layers, three coats on this, to really cover it thoroughly and get that the effect that you want. And then, this comes out like toothpaste. Really thick stuff. It's one of my favorite Turbo Dork colors. And Lure Builds also sells this. That's how I got turned on by it. He does make his own color shift. It does really well. I've just never seen anything so beautiful as the Turbo Dork. 
just really 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 beautiful and it's thick pigments so you just have to uh, use a big needle large nozzle on it See what it looks like over the green. Hmm. It'll be interesting. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to paint this. Have you fished the gazebo at the restaurant? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We don't have a lot of crawdads. We do have them at the lake. But around the gazebo, that's smallmouth territory. That's smallmouth territory. My, some of my favorite fish to catch. So, let's see how that is going to... Ah! Wasn't dry. I think a little residual from the tape is there. That'll probably be my bait. <laughs> we'll just have to uh, dry that up. All right. Yeah, and that area is is known for smallies. And my best time to catch over by the green gazebo is morning. First thing. You'll catch 20 smallies over there, um, really easy. Um, that little that little indentation right there by the green gazebo. Um, I can have a swimmer there, <laughs> 10 feet from them, catch a smallmouth. Um, but you try to get out there before the swimmers get out there and people start playing in the water. I get this fairly dry before we add another coat, especially that guy. That guy got a really... See, this one, it dripped. Kind of a cool pattern. Might just catch a lot, see? You don't want to do that. That's all right. It's all right. here, while it's still wet, take a nice cloth and run it up and down it, and voila, it's all disappeared. Now we'll put coats on it, just keep working it, and you'll never know that bait did what it did. <laughs> Right? Well, you guys will. But you, will. you won't know, really. Yeah, see? Look at that. Looks good. See? Never know. <laughs> yeah, I will. That one will be mine. You never, you, I mean, to be honest, as these things, um, as these things um, continue to morph in color, uh, and, 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 and you do have mistakes like that, um, that uh, sometimes that added line or pattern really dresses it up for the fish. <laughs> well, I think I just thinned it out too much.
work, working out very well. That's all right. I think I can salvage the disaster. We have disasters every once in a while. Especially when you would start playing with bases. And No. The uh, the mystery of painting dates. And nothing is uncorruptible. As long as the paint's wet. Paint's not wet. You're kind of pathetic. I have some pretty ugly ones around here when I first started out. Learning how to paint. Oh my gosh, they're, ter they're terrible. Oh, they're terrible. <laughs> Nothing's irredeemable. Nothing is irredeemable. I don't want you guys to look at these yet. <laughs> yeah, Aspen is where I cut that big brown. Yeah, totally surprised me, as you can see in the video. <laughs> Totally surprised me. I suppose you for a smallmouth. And that guy hit my lipless. And it was a beast. Just a beast of a fish. From then on out, the entire week, everybody was at Aspen trying to find that same trout. <laughs> As you can tell, he went back in the water. More faster than I wanted him to go, but hey, he was in my boat. I landed him. He just flipped out, that's all. Which is fine ish. I just did. Ah, I, I was so excited. It was my personal best. And when you when you lose your personal best so quickly, without all the pictures that you want on it, it's like <laughs> Yeah, this is ugly now. This is an ugly bait. Sometimes ugly gets fish. Nobody will pay for it. So I'll probably give this away. <laughs> <coughs> Note to self. Green is a bad base. It's okay. We're going to continue on this. We'll, we'll correct it. We will get this right. So, I guess I should show you how ugly these baits are right now. And <laughs> they're pretty ugly. They're really bad. Um, I'll let them dry. And then I'll show you how ugly these baits are. Oh, what can you do? Basically, they're copper now. <laughs> look like copper baits. Just gotta get... Oh my god. new BFS reel. Uh, uh, I didn't need a bigger room. That's a, this new BFS reel. It is called OVO. It's 
string is light. It's almost like it's not even on it. I've never... This thing is less than half the weight of my cure, my shamani. It's an amazingly light ring. Now, why is that important? Fatigue is the obvious, but it's really the spool. That spool will spin 40,000 RPMs. Oh, I think I'm wasting my paint here. We're going to just to salvage these two baits. We are doing it. What we're doing. It's all of it. This one's mine. rename this video screwed up. Ah where is that one paint I like? Ah. We're just gonna screw this up so bad. Ah. Yeah Shimano reels are a tank. And you know I, I don't have yeah, I don't even use a heavy rod. Uh, my best is a cast, a Cajun, um, medium heavy. This is my heaviest rod. Like I said in my video today, probably Savannah will be my next rod. Um, my wife yells at me for this latest one. It is a, the, the, probably your cheapest part of fishing is really your equipment. I was going to be line and baits. <laughs> this is going to be weird. All right, guys. We just might just, how bad can you screw up a bait? That's the name of this video. <laughs> I over thinned that other and it ran and it mess messed it up and now I'm just trying to make something that'll catch a bait, uh, fish. But that not the fisherman. I think I only did two of these. It's kind of a cool pattern, even though it's a totally accidental pattern. It is kind of a cool pattern. When you thin out, when over thin your 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 um, paint, you uh, it coagulates. I guess would be the uh, see. 
it coagulates. <laughs> and it gives it a hammered metal look. I guess would be the uh, best way to describe it. Hammered metal. Not exactly the way I expected the bait to turn out. Not even close. There's no doubt in my mind that it'll catch a fish. I just can't sell these. So these, after I, I finish them and do what I want to them, then I will use these. And I'll have an extra on my boat. And if it's working for me, then you know, I'll find somebody on the, on the shores and give them one. <laughs> I, I can't be able to pull out lures that I thought were too far gone. You know what? It's true though, Tim. I mean, like, I have one lure that is about as butt ugly. Oh, it's out somewhere else. Um, as you could possibly imagine. I, I must have been on drugs that day because I made it pink and yellow and green. I mean, it's just the worst color combinations you can, I, I just wanted to make the ugliest bait and it's really good <laughs> ain't no fisherman gonna buy it because you won't believe me <laughs> but bass are weird because when you're bass fishing bass, me bass memorize baits and they don't hit them twice Read that, that, that uh, in today's video, um, read that article that I wrote, and you'll see that bass memorize baits. Can't catch a, a, the same bass twice the same way. They get smartened up. And sometimes you give them something so alien, even they don't believe it. See, another nice thing about a topwater bait, we're not really worried about aerodynamics on this. So even this area here that is kind of thicker, it sort of ruins the, um, the aerodynamics. This is sitting on top of the water, okay? If anything, it'll create more disturbance on the water. It could, I'm not saying it will, work better. Now that's a story I'm sticking with. <laughs> you buy it? Well, Tenny, if I have it and you're out on the lake, I'll give you one. <laughs> it actually is kind of cool looking, you know? It's got that green, the copper. Looks like a piece of metal, actually. It's crazy looking <laughs> what it is. <laughs> we'll do a better one. Well, I won't get so crazy on the next one. <laughs> oh well, what can you do? <laughs> I, it, it is surprising that even a screwed up bait can work out much better than one that you're trying to make look like a bluefish or a shad or something like that. Again, some of the bass are smarter than that. And it's just, this has got a hammered, look at that. Oh, it's got a hammered look. You know, like, you know, like I hammered it. That is crazy looking. which is a neat texture. And again, if this was flowing under the water, that would actually disturb, if this was a square bill or a, a diving bait of some kind, that would kind of mess up the bait's action too much. But because this is a surface bait and you're, you're splashing it left, right, left, right, that texture that texture just may help it um, create more splash, more disturbance.
Well, uh, we need ice. We need ice. Ice. <coughs> I love round bills. Round bills work so good. They have such a perfect S swim in the water. Round bill, round bill. We'll do a round bill. We'll do one round bill just to redeem myself. And I love, this is what actually one of my favorite baits. It'll dive to about 8 to 10 feet. Uh, but it has such a perfect swim. Um, action to it. Um, it just it looks beautiful in the water. And this one, so many patterns I can do on this. And I've done a lot of patterns on this. This is such a beautiful bait to paint and to, to actual fish with. So we're going to hang these up <laughs> in all their not so good glory. <laughs> I swear, that's actually one of the ones I'm looking forward to fishing with first this season. Because you just don't know. How good something so ugly can be. <laughs> what can you do? Yeah, you made a mistake. You try to correct it as much as you can, and then you fish it. <laughs> what you do? You fish it. Because you just don't know. And then you'll never be able to do it twice. <laughs> that might catch a five pounder. And you just you just don't know. It's kind of fun actually. That's why you you kind of play with your paints a little bit. And uh, you know, just have fun. Nice thing is, when you do your own bait, you're really not out a whole lot of money for having fun. <laughs> yeah, if that was a six cents, that's a twelve dollar bait. You know, you don't want to lose a twelve dollar bait. <laughs> I love six cents hard baits; they're the best. That is ugly as it can get. So we're going to put that there. The spring will move. probably about June. Yeah, that's ugly. But you know what? I'm just going to clear coat it. And we're just going to do it. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to take this. We're going to make this a black base. We're going to make this a true color shift. And we're going to do black base on this one. Radium. It's a green yellow um, color shift. And we're only doing one paint. A lot of paint. A lot of paint. Hopefully. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> you need to make it. You see, ugly by chance, Lord. That's <laughs> pretty good. Yeah, maybe we'll, we'll, you know, it'd be fun kind of to sell them in the store. You know, artist screw-ups. <laughs> At a discount. You know, half price it or something like that. <laughs> that would be kind of fun to do. You know, this is Mike's 
you know, I had a stroke that day. Um, they, I do have, I actually do paint with a bit I did have a stroke on. Huh? I only did half of it. <laughs> this is so weird. We gotta shake this deal. Um, I call that my stroke bait. It was a rainbow trout bait that, or it was a, it was a rainbow pattern. I only put spots on one side. <laughs> Look at you know. Bad day, I struck that day. That's important um, when they do a true color shift like this. That, that black is nice and opaque. And this one, we're going to do three coats minimum. We're not going to over thin it. So it kind of did. I always put my reducer in first. So my mistake was I put all the reducer I wanted. You only want to put in about four drops first because you don't want. You want to mix that paint up before it flows through the nozzle without clogging. And this has a lot of metal in it. And you don't want to clog up your nozzle, which kind of screws up your whole mo moment. Almost to the point of putting too much reducer in it. Yeah, that looks really good. So, so I mean, right now all I got is a black paint. That's all I got. have old towels right next to you. Spray it out. While well, you're cleaning that, shake it. Why is all multifast, right? Multitask. <laughs> <laughs> that could be a total line of wars. <laughs> That's pretty much what it would look like. All right, let's uh, put a few drops in. Now, this comes out magenta, sort of a purplish color, and it's nothing like that over black. Truly nothing like this color. do this right. <laughs> have you ever sportsman in No, I haven't. You know, black lures work really, really, really well on bass. Uh, my personal bests have been caught on black lures. So, dark lures with a little bit of highlight to them not all black. I mean, I don't think this one would do quite as well the way it sits. But add a little bit of flash to it. Just a little bit. Like a, a neon to it. 
Um, see now, look at look at that green that's happening to that black now. See now, you can see, you know what has happened to this. See, that was just pure black a second ago. Now it's a green color shift. Uh, that's what Turbo Dork is like. I mean, it's just, when done properly, <laughs> not like that, uh, it's gorgeous. I think my hair dryer, there it goes. Only have one, it's got one in it. It's got three quarter speed. So now we got we just dry that and we'll put more coats on that. Now, this is a darker bait, so typically with darker baits we're going to use this more in stained waters, not as clear as Lake of the Woods. Um, this is my favorite paint. Uh, to go with when it comes to just highlighting my baits, this transparent bright yellow by uh, Createx. Um, it is a really good paint, and we're going to use this on this bait, on this, in order to create that flash that I enjoy so much on these darker baits. But again, it's, it is transparent, so. We'll still, make, we're basically going to create a lighter green uh, on the belly of this, and maybe on the nose. And uh, but look at that. I mean, okay, it's not dry yet, but again, it's just one layer. You know, that's turbo dork, man. I mean, this 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 paint's good if you don't screw it up. This is a great blank. It's called a round bill. Eight to ten foot diving bait. Sometimes I've added a um, spinner on the back hook just to give it more length in a swim-like motion because it has that perfect S. And um, when you add a spinner on the back, it creates a jointed bait look to it with that flash. Works really, really well. I have quite a few on my tackle box with a, a spinner on the back of this. Um, sometimes you don't need a swim bait to create a swim bait. That German brown that you saw me catch, that was a lipless crank with a spinner on the back. The, the German brown thought it was a longer fish because it had a swim, that flash and that swim action to it. And he hit it. Get one of my baits. I'll tell you, it's so much fun to catch something on your bait that you created. During the ice fishing festival, we won't have it. We have no ice, but we have the kids make their own jigs. And then they catch fish with it. And it's just so much fun. We were going to have a, I mean, the plan was to have a kid zone this year, just have guest speakers. Um, I was going to set up the stage in order to have you know some of these professional guides come out and promote their their business for you know the spring and summer and uh, I mean it would be a great opportunity for them but at the same time really good education for everybody who attends the fishing um, day. Um, I think it would be I think it would be really a fun day. Uh, I re I'm, I'm really getting more and more bummed because George is going to make the decision on it uh, on the 15th. Yeah, you could. There's wraps that you could put on baits that you can buy. Heat shrink wraps and uh, 
you put the wrap on and then heat shrink it. Um, yeah, I can do that with that, but you know, this right here, okay, so this is ugly, but it's cracking, <laughs> okay? And when it's cracking, it creates its own pattern. See that? That crack has created its own pattern. And again, that one is not so much, but that one's a definite crack. There's this other stuff that you can buy. Where is it? Ah, acrylic medium. This is, um, oh, that's not it. Where is it? Liquid brisket. Oh, crackle medium. This stuff. And um, as you dry this, it cracks. It does create this this relief to it. And uh, it's kind of fun to use on baits. called crackle medium. And it, it sort of makes it look old fashioned, is what it does, like an old wooden bait. <laughs> Thanks, Cindy. <laughs> uh, uh, let's put the last coat on this. We got enough. And that is our last coat on that. Now, yeah, so sometimes, I mean, like I said, sometimes it's a happy accident. <laughs> you just don't know. I have one bait, I literally was just wiping down, and, so, and all of a sudden it started coming out as a really neat texture. And I fish with it all the time. Jerk bait, but it, it's a screw up bait, but it turned the, the, you know, sort of like that crackle. When I put epoxy over that, um, it's going to really pop it. It'll look really cool. Alright, we got to dry this up pretty good. So when we put the yellow on it, it doesn't run on me. But look how green that is now. See how green and the color shift, the yellow and the green, the gold in it? Looks really cool. Looks really cool. But now we're going to really brighten up the belly. Um, we're going to make that belly really pop. So, And my favorite highlight coat is definitely this transparent yellow. Not this transparent yellow. You, I put it on a lot of baits. <laughs> I put it on a lot of baits. Nice thing about transparent colors, you can tint it, shade it, you know. So now the bottom looks gold. Now the bottom looks gold instead of green by adding that transparent yellow to it really, really sets it off. Looks really cool. That's going to be swimming through the water, flashing that gold and that metallic paint. It'll look really cool. It'll look really cool. One off. That's a one off. Well, technically they're all one-off. You can't do the same thing by hand. Exactly the same. You know? You just can't do that. Okay. 
this in. It's a good looking bait. Those will probably catch more fish. <laughs> You just don't know until it's all said and done. And you take it out onto the water. <laughs> I want you to look at today's broadcast, though, and read that free gift, that little book I, I wrote. It's from the mouth of a largemouth. Yep, see the fish? Be the fish. Catch the fish. Just some of my humor. Leave in comments what you think about it. <laughs> Should I do a whole book like that? <laughs> I used to own a store called the Wild Birds and whew, big snow coming down outside. hard right now outside the snow. I'm just cleaning my nozzle and airbrush. And got these little itty bitty pipe cleaners that you use. And then a the needle. Don't push out anything that might have dried in that nozzle. Happens all the time. So when I pick it up next time, I have full confidence that anything I put in it will come out. I use a Pache Talon, mostly. I like Pache. First airbrush I ever bought. 1983. <laughs> I'm that old. It was a Pache. Pache BL. Don't remember. Loaned it to a relative, never saw it back. <laughs> I'm old. My wife says my beard makes you look older. Personally, I don't know. The night, my hair's all messed up in the back. Look at that. Looking at it. <laughs> the uh, beard makes my chubby cheeks less chubby. <laughs> I like that. And I only have one chin with a beard. <laughs> So that, see, look at that. So you see the blue, the green, the gold, and then it really gets into a gold down at the bottom because that yellow. That yellow really makes that gold, it hit that gold. Um, man, that looks really good on the bottom. Again, this one swims through the water, so you need a sort of a 360 profile on it. So. No, oh uh, yeah, you don't get you don't get snow in Medford, but yeah, it's uh, it's coming down hard right now, and it's windy, so it's just coming down at an angle right now. Yeah, the difference between four thousand feet and where you are. <laughs> oh man, yeah, this is one of those days you bake and you paint and 
do videos and stuff like that. So, <laughs> well, it is, I love watching snow. While it's snowing, it's like the world is in slow motion because it just does this. And all of a sudden the world slows down. And I like that about about snow, um, watching it snow. I love driving in snow too with my truck. Uh, stick it in two wheel drive, do a little drifting. <laughs> Man, it is so pretty outside. Yeah, it's just so pretty when the when the world is white. <laughs> Man, the wind is really kicked up. That is just that's a shame because I mean, there's no ice on the lake. So the, the water turning like that is just not going to have a chance to freeze. Um, so, all right. So I'm going to let you go. Timmy, we'll see you on the lake. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll keep you guys posted on the, uh, uh, you know, the, the ice fishing festival. But I think at the moment we're going to be postponing it. Um, it won't happen on the 17th of next month need ice, you need safe ice. Last year we had a thousand people on the ice. You're not going to throw them out there on four inches of ice. So last year we had two to three feet of thickness. So, uh, nice. All right, buddy. I'm going to end this with uh, Maddie and Kay. Uh, oh, see, I actually hung my little tablet up there like this. It's kind of kind of neat. So I put my tablet up there so I can see you guys. Yeah, it's tough. Oh. Take care buddy and then we will see you guys when we see you. Hopefully fishing soon. I know. Look at that huh? Look at him. I gotta lose weight. <laughs> see ya. <laughs>